So let's resume the remaining discussion. So the paradigm that we have covered was corresponding to critical extreme position. So that we have already covered. Uh, the other paradigm was corresponding to critical path motion. So this is what we are going to cover over here. Uh, so the rationale of uh, opting for this is like we may not be interested in extreme points always, but also the path uh, that one takes from one particular point to the other point. So this path is going to be uh, dictating us in certain ways uh, to opt for particular, uh, particular motion profiles. And that is going to give us some sort of additional constraints to design the CAM profiles. So generally what happens is that in case of critical path motion, uh, position or uh, one of its derivatives are specified. Uh, and let's start with one example where uh, we, we're not concerned about position per se, but uh, we are concerned about velocity, obviously. So there is one phase in one segment, there is this uh, requirement to, ha to, to have the constant velocity. So this is what we uh, wish to explore. Constant velocity is required for one of the segments in the, in the motion profile. So what we are assuming over here in this example, uh, that uh, we accelerate, accelerate to reach to a particular velocity. So let's try to uh, make a little plot of it. So you are going to have this kind of arrangement where you have motion over here. And you are going to have, uh, in this particular case, the very first step like listed over here where you accelerate. So somewhere over here, up to this point, you are going to have the acceleration going on. Obviously, it is not going to have uh, the constant velocity in it. So this is not the, uh, the segment that we, are, uh, that we are concerned about, which is the critical path. But in order to achieve up to that particular segment, we have to accelerate to a particular velocity. Then it says uh, in step number two that you have to maintain a constant velocity of uh, 10 inches per second for 0.5 seconds. So uh, somewhat for, uh, uh, for 0.5 seconds, which is from this point in between these two points, you maintain a constant velocity. So I'm going to write down over here, constant velocity segment is going to be there. Uh, so this is number one and this is number two. So it, in physical sense, you accelerate, then you maintain a particular velocity. Uh, that number is already known. So this is the critical path that we are, we are concerned about. And then it says, let me use a different color now for the remaining segments. It says decelerate. So it, it decelerates. So there is going to be some phase for which it, it, it has got the deceleration going on. So decelerate, uh, so it, it, it goes over there uh, to zero velocity. So eventually at the end of this, you are going to have a zero velocity over here. Zero inches per second is going to be achieved uh, at the end of this segment. And then it says, uh, which may not, which is kind of very visible that when you achieve the zero velocity, it is not going to be assured that you have returned the follower to the start position, uh, uh, which was corresponding to this point over here. So you have to kind of still have some segment for which you return. So this is going to be something like a return um, segment over here. And on top of that, so this is number four, so let me write down number three and number four over here. It says uh, in total, the cycle time is exactly one second. So you start from here at, at t is equal to zero and you finish it over here when t is equal to one second all the way to this point. So uh, this whole 
span in terms of time is one second. So it says that. So obviously you can see that uh, in terms of motion, you have four segments. And among those four segments, there's this number two segments, which is critical in, 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 in a sense that it gives you that realization that you have to maintain constant velocity. So uh, the, the scenario for which it would be required uh, probably is going to be corresponding to the nature of motion you require in that particular machine. And that may be, for example, you wish to move some components at a specific velocity so, so some work can be done uh, in, in a synchronized fashion in that particular subphase. So uh, for that reason, sometimes it is going to be important for you to realize that the points, uh, critical points are not uh, only the important points, but also the path sometimes is going to be important. So uh, with this kind of rough diagram that we have drawn now, let's see uh, how your book kind of uh, pans out in terms of defining this uh, critical path motion. So your book says, like, assume this movement to be in, in these four segments. And all you need to do is to kind of correlate the diagram that we have just made with this diagram. So there's this uh, uh, phase of acceleration over here. There's this deceleration going on at, in phase three. You have the constant velocity, you have the return. So it, it looks sim similar. The only thing that is different is that it, it throws some numbers as well. So it says that uh, uh, you are going to accelerate and you are going to achieve a particular uh, velocity. And that is going to be uh, like uh, you achieve 10 inches per second right over here and you maintain it uh, in this uh, in this uh, five second phase and since it is uh, 10 inches per second and you know the time span between uh, this point sorry let me and this point so this is 0.5 seconds you can obviously see that you are going to cover five inches in this span uh, so similarly, some other numbers are thrown over here in order to make you see uh, how effectively the motion is going to be executed. Since the path has been divided into segments, uh, we can one by one look into those segments and see how can we model them? How can we uh, specify a specific uh, uh, profile or a curve which is going to serve the purpose? So uh, for that reason, let's see the very first segment. The very first segment uh, is where, where the acceleration is going on. And for that, you have four boundary conditions known. And those four boundary conditions are uh, corresponding to S, you are going to start from zero value. So over here, you can see that S is equal to zero at uh, uh, theta to be equal to zero. So this is one of the boundary conditions. The other boundary condition is like uh, uh, velocity is also going to be zero. So V is equal to zero as well. So S is equal to zero at this particular case. Uh, let it be like S zero zero and V zero zero. And then you have uh, uh, the other uh, boundary conditions corresponding to when you when you complete this acceleration phase and that is where the velocity is going to be uh, 10 inches per second so v uh, 1 is going to be equal to 10 inches per second that's one of the uh, one of the boundary conditions and then you know that the acceleration is needed to be completed by then because you have to then maintain uh, the, the constant velocity phase. So for that reason, over here, A1 should be equal to zero. So with this realization that you have for segment one, four boundary conditions known, you have to think about what is going to be the polynomial that you wish to fit over here, if it is the polynomial, by the way. So I'm assuming over here that we are going to opt for polynomial and since you have four boundary conditions, so the order of polynomial is going to be three. So poly three 
gives you that kind of realization. The process is already known to you, how to find out the coefficients when you have the boundary conditions known. In this case, it would be sufficient at this particular juncture just to identify the boundary conditions and you are well equipped to handle uh, the kind of polynomial that would be serving the purpose. So this is segment number one. Segment number two, where you have the constant velocity is going to have only two boundary conditions. And what are those? This is right over here. Uh, the, uh, the displacement is going to have uh, some starting value where the uh, where the uh, previous segment has left you is this is where you're going to use the connectivity of these segments uh, to your benefit so this boundary condition right over here is going to be available from the previous computation and the other thing that you know is that velocity is needed to be constant throughout this uh, second second segment so obviously uh, you are going to have this velocity already known to you. So these are the two uh, boundary conditions that are known to you. And for that reason, you are going to use a polynomial. And this polynomial is going to be the first order polynomial because it is the straight line uh, uh, polynomial, the polynomial for a straight line. And that is kind of visible as well. This is already shown right over here. This is the equation of line that you can see uh, at display y is equal to mx plus c the, the most commonly used uh, single uh, a, a straight line segment so you you now see that uh, it depends on the on the number of boundary conditions to define which polynomial is going to serve the purpose so in this case for segment number two where you have only two boundary conditions because of the constant velocity requirement uh, you just need to kind of have the first order polynomial um, uh, figured out depending upon the coefficients uh, uh, to serve the purpose let's move on and see what is going to happen for segment number three now segment number three is going to have four boundary conditions and these four boundary conditions are going to appear right over here uh, there's this uh, boundary condition on the uh, on on s where you are going to find out this value right from uh, the previous solution so this is going to come from the previous exercise and similarly for the velocity because it is going to be the constant velocity at 10 meters per second so this is going to remain there over here and similarly for acceleration it should start from zero value so this is also given over here. Uh, so in this particular scenario, uh, the, the first three boundary conditions are very well known. And since you are going to have for this segment deceleration going on, this deceleration is going to achieve uh, this velocity over here to be zero velocity. So that is going to be the fourth boundary conditions uh, condition. So in this particular scenario, since you have four boundary conditions for segment number three, where the deceleration is going on, uh, you can safely say that the third order polynomial is going to serve the purpose. So that's why it is written like poly three over here. Now moving on for the fourth or the last segment, uh, you have six boundary conditions. Why so? because eventually it has to complete the uh, the full rotation uh, and eventually you go, you are going to reach to the uh, starting value so you are going to find out those uh, boundary conditions you need to necessarily meet those uh, at the end of the full rotation so that's why some are going to be coming in from uh, that side and some are going to come right over here from the side that we have just kind of solved using the third order polynomial so that's why uh, this right away let me use a different color let me use blue over here so this right over here is going to come from the previous solution this as well from the previous solution and this as well from the previous solution and the other ones are going to the other three are going to going to be necessarily met because you have to complete the full rotation 
uh, so uh, let me use red color over here this this as the arrows are indicating are going to uh, going to be appearing because of the nature of uh, last segment because it has to complete the full rotation so with this realization that critical path motion is going to have a few segments thrown in the middle of this uh, uh, whole mix uh, which are going to give you uh, a specific set of polynomial requirement uh, over there uh, uh, which is not difficult in terms of its treatment but you need to realize that sometimes the extreme points are not going to be important uh, but also the path it takes to reach to those points so that we have exhibited in case of uh, a polynomial one right over here which defines the constant velocity phase so with this realization we have covered uh, the critical path motion uh, in terms of its structure uh, we have not solved by hand the polynomials uh, because we have already in the very first phase of this lecture we have already solved the polynomials so you know the process you know the uh, rituals corresponding to that so i'm sure that you you can handle that uh, so in the next slide i'm going to just show you the final curves and that would be kind of completing the discussion over here so these are the resulting curves uh, so obviously you can see the acceleration phase going on right over here you have the constant velocity phase over here because of this constant velocity happening over here and then you decelerate and then you reach to the final uh, point where it starts restarts the whole sequence once again so this is where you return to the uh, initial uh, phase uh, so in this realization you can see that uh, in the return uh, there is not a necessary requirement to follow a specific kind of polynomial but because we have uh, we have uh, said that generally you are going to have the six boundary conditions so you can uh, use uh, three three four five polynomial in your case so that's exactly what we have chosen over here but in certain cases you would be interested in finding out not the six uh, uh, you may specify not the six boundary conditions but the eight boundary conditions and then you can use the uh, four five six seven polynomial as well but generally this is the case that you have got six boundary conditions for that so in this realization you can readily re realize that the critical path can be taken care of as is the case in this over here for constant velocity and obviously sometimes the acceleration and deceleration may not uh, may not be required uh, for example in this case you only have got two segments over here and in these two segments uh, you you have the constant velocity phase over here and then you 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 need to return back to the uh, normal so with this realization that you have got the constant velocity you can fit the first order polynomial over here and in this case you have the uh, you have to return so if you have six boundary conditions you can use the three four five polynomial over here so this is what we have selected over here in case of two segments so you can have quite a bit of uh, variability in when it when it gets to the critical path motion so up until now we have only covered the constant velocity that would be sufficient uh, at this particular uh, second year level but in certain cases constant acceleration or constant position may may be kind of uh, uh, requirements uh, so so we have not covered that but that's not required at this particular stage uh, critical path motion has been defined has been covered uh, once in terms of four segments and once in case of two segments over here so that is going to be sufficient for now and this is the resulting svj diagram for two segments so just kind of i've kind of completed my statement in the previous slide uh, but for the sake of completion you need to see that uh, there, there are only two segments over here and these are the svj diagrams corresponding to it is analytical approach the only method no it is not there is another graphical method a much more easier graphical method should i say uh, we have done the hard method already uh, we're going to do the easy method now uh, 
and this is going to look easy as well because uh, you have covered quite a few basics already you know the diction you know the vocabulary you have uh, uh, done the analytical method in much more detail so this is not going to going to be difficult at all i've included this over here just to make you uh, realize that how the graphical methods are used to draw the cam profiles and also to answer a query of one of the students uh, to to solve a few problems in the in the lectures as well although it is not kind of conventionally what i follow but this is uh, because of the request made by the student added over here so in the first cam design method using the graphical approach i'm going to opt for simple harmonic motion uh, as the name suggests suggests over here now in this particular case what we have to do is to make uh, a, a graph according to the requirements of the simple harmonic motion and that would be something like this uh, have a rectangle this rectangle is going to have uh, zero placed over here and you are going to have a beta right over here so what happens is that once you have this rectangle rectangle over here uh, for simple harmonic motion you have uh, the requirement to place a half circle like uh, in the in this fashion as is shown over here now in this realization this half circle should should be uh, should be adjacent to the rectangle that we have drawn already so this uh, point over here and this point should be should be uh, kind of coinciding so once you have had the the half circle drawn now you can start the discussion uh, the procedure and that would be like subdivide the half circle into two quadrants and since you have divided the half circle into two quadrants you can similarly divide the rectangle into two sections as well so whatever is the measurement from zero to beta you just need to kind of measure it and divide it in half as you have divided uh, the half circle into two quadrants once that has been done divide the quadrant uh, once again now you have uh, 45 degrees uh, divisions over here at over here as well as over here so this is kind of 45 degrees so once you have done this division over here have a corresponding division on the rectangle as well like subdivide the half section from uh, this side to this side into two as well so this is exactly what we have done once that has been done subdivide the other quadrant into 45 degrees segments and similarly the rectangle is going to be subdivided as well so once that has been done further subdivide the 45 degree segment into two sub segments and similarly the corresponding uh, rectangular part is going to be subdivided as well similarly have another division over there on the half circle have the corresponding subdivision over here over here correspondingly over here have the last one further subdivided and fill this space up in another division as well so in this fashion what you have done is that uh, from the half circle side to the rectangular side you have kind of subdivided the whole or kind of made this grid according to the simple harmonic motion requirements so what you have to do now is to uh, make certain other lines which are going to make uh, or draw the cam profile that we have mentioned so the very first task that you have to do is to uh, start your line from the very first uh, point of intersection over here to the point of intersection corresponding to this so you you know that this is zero this is one two three four five six seven and eight and uh, this is one this is two this is three four five 
6, 7, and 8. So 0 to 0 already uh, available. 1 to 1, you have drawn the line segment. Similarly, draw another line segment from 2 to 2, like this. From 3 to line 3. 4 to 4 is already there. I'm just drawing 5 to uh, fifth line. 6 to 6. 7 to 7. And 8 is already there. So at this particular stage, if I just make you see that using a different color over here, let me use uh, uh, green or rather blue, that would be appropriate. So the very first point is point of intersection is this point. The other point of intersection is this. The third one is this. Fourth one, fifth, sixth, seventh, eighth, and ninth. So uh, in, in this realization, you have got the uh, the uh, points of intersection. All you need to do now is to connect them together. And I'm going to use uh, a a black color over here in order to make that. So I'm going to try to make this curve by connecting these points of intersection carefully. So this curve that I've just drawn is the curve corresponding to the simple harmonic motion profile. So this is the profile, which is the which, which is for the simple harmonic motion. So this is a graphical approach of uh, drawing a, a CAM profile uh, based upon the simple harmonic motion requirements. And all the other characteristics that we have uh, already kind of uh, figured out in the analytical approach, they, they would remain consistent over here in this profile as well. So this is for the, uh, uh, for the displacement. Let's now do the exercise for constant acceleration. Uh, constant acceleration obviously would mean that uh, when you observe the acceleration profile in the SVAJ diagram, you would observe that it is just like a straight line uh, 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 that exhibits the constant acceleration. Uh, but how to, how to draw the profile in terms of uh, displacement? This is the concern for us. So let's try to do that. And we are going to uh, make a grid just like similar to the previous exercise because it is the graphical approach. So let's do that. So initially, what we are we are going to have is a rectangle, as was the case previously, where you know that uh, the starting value corresponds to the starting line corresponds to the zero, and then it goes all the way to the beta, uh, corresponding to the rise in this case. But you can do for the fall and the uh, and, the, and the relevant stuff can be kind of conjoined together to have a full RDFT CAM profile drawn as well. But at this particular stage, we're just considering the rise. So in case of uh, uh, that, that you have got the, uh, the rectangle, you are going to subdivide it just like this into half. Then half is further divided into uh, quarters. And then each quarter is further subdivided to make like uh, uh, eight segments in this rectangle. And by the way, th this is not a compulsion to have the eight segments in it, but just like for the sake of kind of uh, remaining consistent with the previous discussion we have done like this. So once you have made the grid in this kind of vertical lines fashion, you are going to do that uh, for the horizontal as, uh, aspect as well. So further subdivision is made over here as well as over here. So as a result of that, now you've got a grid in front of you. So in this particular fashion, what you can see is like you are going to start from zero, go all the way to beta. And in that, basically, actually, the idea is that you have one, two, three, 
four, five, six, seven, and eight uh, uh, lines corresponding to this. And similarly, in the vertical direction as well, you have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and eight. So the number of lines in the vertical orientation should be equal to the number of lines in the grid uh, in the horizontal orientation. And this is going to give you that uh, kind of uh, base grid to perform the graphical approach for the constant acceleration. So what we are going to do now is to uh, uh, further uh, make this uh, diagram consistent with the constant acceleration paradigm. So the very first step that you have to take is to uh, connect a straight line between these two vertices that you that you can now see right over here. So let me use just like a pointer over here that you have to start from here and you need to connect using the straight line all the way to the other side. So from uh, a lower left corner to the upper right corner, you're going to just draw a straight line. So now what else you need to do is to draw another line and you need to go all the way to the segment over here like up to this point. So the middle line over here, which let me write down the numbers as well. So this is zero, this is one, two, three, and four. So the line with the number four is the kind of reference line. All the lines are going to be connected to this in the initial phase. So, so this particular line is uh, going to have a different angle than the previous line, and it is going to uh, uh, across the uh, line number four right over here. So similarly, you need to draw another line from the same vertex from the lower uh, left corner, uh, cutting the line number four, but at, a, at the other grid number. And similarly, you need to do the exercise over here once again. So once this side has been covered, you are going to uh, use the upper vertex upper uh, right vertex and draw lines in a similar fashion over here. So this is going to give you that grid or that that kind of uh, uh, base structure which allows you to draw uh, the cam profile. So now you have got this grid available, the black lines, the base grid and the red lines corresponding to the constant acceleration. Uh, and now what we are going to do is to, just for the sake of uh, making it a bit simpler, I've just kind of eliminated or removed the horizontal lines so that the visibility is improved. So now, now what I'm going to do is to uh, uh, indicate the points which are important for me at this particular stage. So I'm going to use blue color over here. So the very first line is right over here, which crosses uh, the line number one, zero, one, two, three, four, once again, written like over here. So this first line is crossing line number one right over here at this particular point. The line number two crosses line number two right over here. Uh, similarly, the other line crosses line number three at this particular point. The um, diagonal, the middle diagonal, the cross diagonal is crossing line number four right over here. And similarly, the other lines, this is the intersection, this the other intersection, similarly this intersection, and then obviously you are going to have another point over here. So now at this particular stage, you have uh, these red lines crossing the black lines, black vertical lines, and that gives you those points of intersection which are important for us. So now similarly, I've uh, done in case of simple harmonic motion, I'm going to draw a curve in a very careful fashion using a black color. So this is going to start from here, cross this point of intersection, the next one, the next one, this, this, and similarly this. So you have just kind of just make me erase this. Once again, try to draw it so that it, it 
it is drawn in a nicer fashion. Uh, I'll just quickly do that. So this point, another point, similarly over here. So this black line, although it is not drawn perfectly because I was just trying to draw it uh, using freehand. Uh, so this is indicating the uh, the profile of the cam uh, if you use the constant acceleration paradigm. So in case of cycloidal profile as well, we are going to remain consistent with the rectangle size that we have selected previously. So similarly, we are going to have this rectangle drawn, then subdivided into two halves, halves into quarters, and then performing further, uh, further subdivisions like this. Now, once we have uh, drawn these, we are going to draw another uh, diagonal as well from the uh, lower uh, left corner to all the way to upper right corner. So this is going to be the red line that we are going to use as a reference for the subsequent discussion. So this is the rectangle that we are going to use for the cycloidal profile. But the condition over here is that we are going to make use of a circle. And the circle is something like which moves over this red line in a fashion that there is no slip going on and once the full circumference is covered it reaches to the top pinnacle so this gives you that realization that uh, what is going to be the maximum height of the of the rectangle so on the circle similarly we are going to subdivide uh, the circle into halves in a similar fashion then halves into quarters and then quarters into uh, further segments so actually, in a similar fashion that you have got eight segments over here, starting from zero, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and eight, you have uh, the same segments over here, starting from zero, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and actually eight is kind of, once again, coinciding with the same point. So, at this particular stage, you can see that uh, the number of segments for the rectangle are equal to the number of segments on the circle. Uh, the size realization have, has been already uh, described. So with this realization, we're going to say that we're going to move on to the next step, which is to uh, draw horizontal lines. And that would be something like this. Zero should be connected with four. One should be connected with three. 5 should be connected with 7. And since point 2 and 6 are kind of uh, in the context of horizontal orientation, they are not going to have uh, uh, lines exhibiting or emanating from them. So this is something like that. So you have to further uh, draw lines in this fashion on this circle. So now you are kind of well prepared to use this circle uh, to to uh, draw the cycloidal profile. So let's do that in the next slide. Over here, what we have done, we have moved the circle, the, the center of the circle at the, uh, at the point of intersection for the lower left corner. And this is going to be the scenario over here. The diagonal is redrawn once again, as we have previously mentioned. Now, what we need to do now is to uh, draw parallel lines with this diagonal. These should be parallel. I'm going to repeat that. Uh, so the very first thing that you are going to observe is that, let me write down the numbers as well. So this is zero, this is one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and eight coincides with that. And similarly for the rectangle as well, let, let me quickly write down those numbers as well. So this is one, this is two, this is three, four, five, six, seven, and obviously eight becomes equal to zero. So this is like that. So now what we need to do is to uh, draw parallel lines, parallel with the red line. So the very first thing that we are going to do is to draw a line from the point of intersection uh, 
of this uh, of these horizontal lines with line zero on the rectangle and that would look something like this so if you observe what is happening over here uh, you can readily identify that it starts from uh, this point this point starts from this point and it goes all the way to uh, line number one so uh, this line which is a kind of uh, a line corresponding to number one and number three on the circle so this line goes all the way to number one uh, starting from this point and this would be further clear when i'm going to draw the parallel lines for the other uh, points as well so let's quickly do that for number two the line should start from that point all the way in parallel with the red line to line number two it would cross it uh, or, or intersect the line number two on the on the rectangle similarly you're going to draw another line uh, from uh, from the from the line where we have drawn uh, corresponding to number one similarly the same line corresponds to number three as well so you are going to draw a parallel line which is going to cross line number three like this similarly in parallel you are going to draw another line uh, from uh, 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 from this point corresponding to point number five so this is going to like that and by the way i've not drawn uh, separately uh, a line for uh, uh, point number four because uh, the the horizontal line is going to going to pass through uh, the lower left vertex and that line has been already drawn so that's why i've not redrawn it similarly you're going to draw another line which is going to correspond to line number point number six in parallel with the red line which crosses eventually the vertical line number six similarly corresponding to line number seven and similarly so since the parallel lines have been drawn already it would be appropriate now to uh, identify the points of intersection so the very first point of intersection is the lower left corner itself so i'm going to use a black color in order to indicate that point of intersection over here the next one is this the next one is going to be this then the next then the next the next one similarly the others over here and the last one is the uh, top right corner so now you can see the point of intersections have been identified uh, all i need now to uh, try to draw a curve connecting these points together so i'll try to do the best i can uh, using the free hand so it would be starting from here it will go all the way in this fashion like this although it is not that good drawn but you can get the idea uh, that uh, this is going to be the cycloidal profile using the graphical approach uh, and let me try to use a highlighter as well just to make this one uh, visible as well so this is going to be something like this so this is the cycloidal profile using the graphical approach although it was relatively complex as compared to the other profiles that we have drawn but but combining um, uh, the requisite steps that we have taken over here uh, it is going to give you how to graphically handle or approach this problem so over here you can see them side by side with each other uh, the simple harmonic motion the constant acceleration profile and the cycloidal profile using the graphical approach so in these two lectures we have covered uh, all these topics that we wanted to cover covering a wide range of possibilities um, uh, starting from the cp paradigm and in that all this stuff 
uh, and then making these comparisons and then in the CPM paradigm we have covered quite a few things as well and in order to further substantiate the the understanding we have done the graphical approach as well so we have covered quite a few basics and quite a few details as well so initially we spread out the stuff and then we got into the depths and uh, found out that what internally is happening in case of different camp profiles uh, and uh, this is pretty much all that we wanted to cover in this uh, camp follower mechanisms uh, so do uh, practice the problems uh, do solve the examples as well uh, this is going to give you uh, that assurance that you have understood and you have mastered the uh, the the requisite understanding required over here so if you have any questions you can freely ask them in the microsoft teams uh, i'll respond to those as early as possible so by next week bye bye